The forest in French Guiana is a natural El Dorado. Its biodiversity includes hundreds of thousands of species. It's one of the last Edens on Earth. Its surface area is equal to a sixth of the size of France. It represents 5% of the Amazon rainforest. But while the Amazon's ecosystems have suffered from human presence on the other side of its borders, the rainforest in French Guiana still looks the same as when Christopher Columbus landed here. But today, Guiana's forest has hit a turning point in its age-old history, currently undergoing an unprecedented demographic explosion. Will it suffer the same tragic fate as the Amazon rainforest? Or will mankind come up with solutions in time to enjoy its treasures and preserve this precious Eden? For scientists, the priority is understanding how the rainforest functions before it's too late. The density of all these trees and the luxuriance of this damp tropical rainforest with its rich biodiversity can be explained by the amount of energy the forest receives from the sun, of course, along with all the rain that falls to the ground. These elements are very important for photosynthesis and tree growth. We could think of the forest as a kind of building with different stories. The first level on the ground is characterized mainly by soil litter, palm trees, and new young trees, and the animal life, in particular insects and mosquitoes. The second floor is the realm of tree trunks, a realm with relatively little light, so there are few branches on the trunks. The third floor of our building is the canopy. This is where we find the interface between the sun, atmosphere, and forest. The canopy greatly limits the amount of light that reaches the ground. And only about 1% of the sun's rays make it through to the ground. The canopy also ensures that heavy rains don't erode the ground too quickly. So the canopy, with its structure, contributes to maintaining the ecosystem. The canopy is the realm of at least 800 varieties of birds and mammals, such as toucans, capuchin, and howler monkeys. Each plays a vital role in the equilibrium of the forest. By ingesting fruit from the trees and distributing seeds through their excrement, they ensure plant biodiversity, which is the foundation of the food chain. But far below on the ground, it's a different world altogether. Very few human eyes have ever witnessed what happens there after dark. To learn more about the inhabitants of this mysterious realm and understand its biodiversity, Cécile Richard Hansen, engineer with the ONCFS, the National Office of Hunting and Wildlife, plays detective using a system that is as ingenious as it's harmless. We set up an initial camera trap that was mainly to get to know all the biodiversity on the site. We got over 80,000 photos of at least 30-some different species, some of which are 
For instance, there are these curassows. One of the species we're studying, a large earth-dwelling wildfowl, here's a very rare species, the giant armadillo, which is rarely seen in Guiana. Some animals are quite frequent on the site. The giant anteater, which has found our equipment and is smelling it. Another anteater with a baby on her back. Our famous peccaries that we've now begun studying and capturing to mark them. Jaguars, most likely a female with her adolescent cub approaching. A cougar that looks like it's posing. There's quite a few big cats in this zone. A pair of amardillos mating. Once again, something that's quite extraordinary because it's a rare species. The result of these photo campaigns helped us decide on this area as a study zone and to undertake real capture operations, trapping the animals and fitting them with GPS collars to understand their movements and improve wildlife management in French Guiana. Researchers are fascinated by two species that are key to Guiana's ecosystem. First, the peccary, a prey enjoyed both by wildcats and humans. But its biorhythms are still greatly unknown. Cécile Richard Hansen built large pens to catch these creatures that move in herds. Awara fruit makes excellent bait. This species has suffered huge losses here without any explanation. There were numerous around 2002, but now there's hardly any left, and no one knows why. We see this trend in several areas of the Amazon. We need to learn about peccary biology, and that's the goal of the ONCFS. The other species concerned lies at the other end of the food chain one of the peccary's major predators, the jaguar. This rare creature is a good gauge of the health of the undergrowth. Using the cries of a female in heat and those of frightened prey, biologist Rachel Berzins and veterinarian Chloe Rodrigue have laid a jaguar trap. The males are solitary and one must be clever to outmaneuver their suspicious nature. The goal of our operation is to try to capture big cats, notably jaguars. They're lured by the sound recordings we've placed near the trap. The jaguar places its paws right where we want, and the trap's triggered when it puts its paw here. We make rounds every four hours, so the jaguar isn't stuck in an uncomfortable position for too long. Once the animal has been trapped, we come to see and carry out all the procedures to fit it with the collar and so on. Then once the anesthesia has worn off, we set it free about an hour later. Human activity is slowly encroaching on the jaguar's territory because there's more and more deforestation and more and more livestock farming. Jaguars are losing their habitat, so the long-term goal is to help them continue to coexist peacefully along with man. This small patch of jungle is only a tiny sample of the extraordinary wildlife that has burgeoned here since time immemorial, far from human eyes. And though hunting is becoming a problem elsewhere in the forest, the creatures here have nothing to fear, for good reason. Three, two, allumage, EAP, décollage. The Guiana Space Center in Kourou is the launch base for Ariane rockets. The site is guarded by armed forces, which makes poaching impossible here. An unexpected blessing for wildlife. Home to Amerindians for thousands of years, the territory of modern-day French Guiana has been the focus of conquest since Captain de la Touche first explored it back in the 17th century. But aided by epidemics that the region's mosquitoes held in store for invaders, the forest has always managed to drive man away. It also earned the reputation as a green hell, so much so that in 1846, France built a penal colony there. But even the penal colony's mission was to populate the country and take advantage of its resources. 
in a hundred years, the hoped-for results never materialized, and the rainforest was abandoned. At the end of the 60s, French logging operations forced out of Africa by decolonization were lured by Guiana's treasures to make a fresh attempt. But they met with no greater success. They realized too late that the local market was too small and exporting the wood was too expensive. Those failures spelled good luck for French Guiana. Elsewhere in the Amazon rainforest, human presence resulted in rampant deforestation at the pace of two million hectares per year. In other words, the disappearance of an area equivalent to the entire Guianese rainforest every three years. But today, this pristine paradise can no longer hold the human element at bay as people settle in greater and greater numbers along its edges. The undergrowth is a genuine laboratory that science teams study tirelessly. The trunks of trees that have stood here for centuries contain the story of our planet's climate, as well as the exact nature of the role the tropical forest plays in climate change. Damien Bonal and his team insert probes into their resin canals. They're studying an amazing phenomenon, tree transpiration. For large trees, roughly one meter in diameter, we've measured that each day they give off two to three hundred liters of water. High-tech instruments placed way up at the top of this tower measure water exchange between the forest and the atmosphere. A large part is absorbed by trees and transpired through their leaves in the form of water vapor. The transpiration is equivalent to about 60,000 liters of water given off per hectare of forest each day. That's six liters per square meter. So each day there's 10 liters per square meter that falls and six liters per square meter that are transpired. The difference is about four liters, and that's the water that goes into the rivers. First into the ground, then into the rivers, and then into the oceans. This enormous amount of energy that is exchanged in the form of transpiration contributes to cloud formation over the rainforest. Other sensors on the towers take exact readings of the amount of carbon absorbed, then released by trees. The results are clear. The rainforest absorbs more CO2 than it emits, which means less greenhouse gases wind up in the atmosphere. The Amazon forest helps the planet heat up a little less fast. If we were to cut down this tropical rainforest, then the planet would heat up faster than it currently is. That's why we say the Amazon rainforest controls the climate somewhat in South America, and more so it helps the climate of a small part of the whole continent. If humans were to destroy the rainforest, as they've done in the rest of the continent, it's not simply plant and animal life that would be endangered, but mankind itself. At a time when climate change and imbalance have hit a dangerous threshold, the preservation of French Guiana's rainforest is more important today than it was before. <laughs> 